So would you advise people to get into Forex or not? In the business space, what's the role? Today we explore the astonishing path of an inspiring 17-year-old forex trader and amassing hundreds of thousands of pounds. A gleaming 25k Rolex adorned his wrist, a testament to his pros. Prepare to learn the tactics, attitude and exclusive tips that allowed this teen to succeed financially at such a young age. How you doing bro? Doing good, thank Pleasure you. Pleasure to see you. Pleasure for Thank you so much for having this meeting with me. So obviously, I know that you do Forex. First of all, I have to ask, just for the people out there, how old are you? I'm 17 years old. 17 years old. Yeah, man. And you've made a, a lot of money for a 17 year old. I want to ask, how much money did you make last month? Last month, I made $100,000 in profit. And that's profit? 100% profit. So listen, I'm 19 years old, 100,000 in profit. <laughs> that sounds very taboo. I want to know, how did you even get into this Forex industry? How did you even get into it? Um, what, what was the inspiration behind getting into it? Four years ago, I saw my friend posted something on a story like, yeah, look at me, I just made $4,000 profit. Okay. And then I was interested, so I was like, okay. Messaged him, he was like, I sell a course. Okay. Most of these Forex traders, they don't trade. Yeah. They usually sell courses. So he sold the course, 200 pounds, I didn't buy it, because uh -huh. I was 14, zero pound <laughs> on my bank account. Yeah. And that's really intriguing how I got into it. I learned it myself on YouTube over and over and over. Okay. And, but that's not really what I do right now. Forex is just like a little side income. I might trade two or three times a month. Okay. So what is your main source of income? So my main source of income is actually helping people acquire capital to actually trade. Okay. So for example, if you're trading indices, Forex, crypto, mm -hmm. the main problem is that you need a lot of money to make a lot of money, right? Okay. It's like any business. So what I help right now is I help people acquire that capital. Okay. So, so essentially you're trading other people's money? Uh, no, so basically there's something called prop firms okay. in the forex industry. So okay. if you pass these prop firms, you'll have access to tens of thousands of dollars or sure. uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars. But the problem is that 95% of the people fail these challenges. Okay. Yeah, so, and then three years into my forex journey, someone told me I can pass your prop firm challenge for you. And I was like, wait, what are you talking about? Okay. And then he passed it for me first go, and I was absolutely surprised, I was shocked. Wow. And then when he passed it for me, I told him how much he's selling the bot for. He was like $3,000 and then I brought it from him. Mm. And then I gave that bot to a team of people. They tweaked the bot, they made it even better. And now I use that bot to actually pass for other people. Okay, so now people are paying you for that same bot. Yeah, because 95% of people fail. So now okay. they're not paying me for a bot, they're paying me for a slot on the bot to pass me there. I for understand. Me me. So you first started as a Forex trader. Yeah, I first started. But you that, see, yeah. there's something that specifically that you said. You said you didn't purchase his course. You don't do a course. Every single Forex trader I know is selling 100%. a course. And this is why it looks essentially like a scam to most people. Yeah. Why did you not go that route? Because I, I just, I tried to go that route, I'll be real. At 15 okay. years old, I did start a course uh -huh. and it did make me a few pounds. Okay. And literally after a few years, I wasn't making a lot of money from trading and I was like, I've got to stop this. You've got to be real to yourself. You can't just lie to yourself That's or true. your lies will become true. That's true. And then boom. And then I. And then really and truly, I just stopped selling a course after that. Uh, I stopped a year ago. Okay. I got into the business, which I got into right now. Sure. And it's been running, 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 making me a lot of money. Beautiful. So listen, you just told us that last month you made a 100K profit. Yeah. Well, today we want to spend some of that money. Of course, man. So where are we going right now? We're going to Mr. RM's place right here. Okay. In the office. And, and we're, we're going to buy a new kettle. Yeah. Dubious digital currencies and elusive forex traders have consistently triggered my inner skeptic. But today, my skepticism takes a back seat making way for an eager curiosity as I team up with Bilal, determined to peel back the layers of the financial enigma and uncover whether there's more to this forest tale than meets the skeptical eye. You know, there's a lot of people that are skeptical about this forex thing. Yeah. How come you think that is? It seems as if most of the scammers in the world come from forex. Yeah, of course. That does happen. However, you can easily identify who's a scammer and who's not a scammer. How? You can just look, if they're saying, I'm, I'm not calling everyone cap. Because I've been scammed before, maybe upwards of 7,000 pounds. Yeah. Just, if it's too good to be true, like uh, you heard okay. saying, it's, it's too, too, too good to be okay. true, okay? Yeah. So these people showing you, oh, I made 20,000 in a day. Only 0.01% of Forex traders are making that. I'll just oh, be real wow. with you. L wow. Literally, I'll just be real with you. And if they are making that much, they wouldn't be on Instagram flaunting, oh, look at me, I'm, I'm of doing course. this, that. And that's how you find out, really and truly. Okay, I understand. But you're making... A 
similar to that money, yeah. 100K a month. I don't teach anyone how to do my business though, you know. Okay. My business is outside of Forex. I'm in the um, Forex business, not Forex trading or anything like that. So you're the business side of Forex. Business side. You're that's, not a Forex trader. It. Yeah. Uh, again, I do trade two, three times a month. Literally okay. yesterday I took a trade. Okay. Lost. Oh, yeah. but it's all of right, course. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just yeah, live, yeah. we just carry on. You know? I understand. So would you advise someone to get into Forex or not? Because it seems as if my audience, they're very interested in Forex. I made a comment about Forex traders before and everyone went at my neck. So would you advise people to get into Forex or not? In the business space, I'll just be real, no. No, okay. Really? And why would you say that? Because that's a bit confusing because you are directly course, in yeah. there. You know, people watching this want to be like, you, I'm seeing a Mary, I'm seeing Off-White Balenciaga. <laughs> yeah. this, is, this is someone's mortgage <laughs> you're wearing and we're about to buy another house right yeah, now. Of course, but if they were to get into business, I would tell them to get into something like drop shipping or just like any, any other business online because okay. Forex training requires your like patience. It, re sure. it requires some crazy psychology. And me trading four years, I would say I've made minimum wage. Literally oh, wow. trading forex, me trading four years. Of course, some of the people, <laughs> some of the people after four years, they might make two hundred k, one hundred k. But at the end of the year, if you were doing drop shipping for four years, you would make way more than you were trading. Like I would, I would say that to you already. I'll just be real. Okay, listen, uh, that's very interesting that you're saying it's better to get into drop shipping or an alternative as as business. Is, you know. That's how you, exactly, and I, and I do appreciate that. I'm gonna ask you one more last question before we do check out the watch. I want to know, are you a multi-millionaire? Yes or no? Are you a millionaire yet? If you're going to do the 10x rule for like business multiplying, oh, my business is worth. Let's just say, <laughs> if I do the 10x rule on my business, I would say it's worth about 5 million, 6 million. Oh, but I can't pounds. sell it for 5 million. Yeah, I okay. can't sell it for 5 million, 6 mm -hmm. million. And I've actually got receipts. I can show you on my phone right now. Well, let's just show us the receipts. That's better, you know. We love receipts. Yeah, so literally, if you're going to put the 10x rule, you could say 5 million, whatever, okay. However, I can't sell it for 5 million. Okay. But with liquid assets, I haven't reached a million yet. I'll just be okay. real. Like, yeah, as you can see, 82K last month the month before that we hit 51 and then right here is when the business was starting out so we didn't make a lot but literally there are really real receipts you can't fake strike payments you can't literally as you can see 207,000 received and again almost every single day we get the payments through wow that is insane i gotta ask you you're receiving so much money at such a young age you're not even 20 years old yet you know i'm 19 years old you know i'm with people that are older than you maybe someone twice your age what are you doing with that money? What are you investing that money into? What's happening? Are you just buying Rolexes, APs? What are you doing? Yeah, uh, I mean, I've got a few watches, but <laughs> really and truly, what else are you going to do with your money at 17? What else are you going to do? That's just... true, but you're not investing in a property. Oh, it's... yeah. Um, I want to get into property development, okay. stuff like that, but you're going to need a little bit of capital. Of course, you of can course. take all your investors' but money. 207, but 207, I think you're, you've got a little bit for yourself. Yeah, a little bit. I'll get more by the end of the year. Like, did you have any assistance from your father, your mother? How did that come about? No, my dad was actually never rich. He's a literal ta taxi driver. Wow. When I was in year eight, I was literally going to school. I didn't want to ask him for money because he actually, his car wasn't working yes. back then. And then I didn't ask him for money. He went, went to school without food. I, I just used to ask my friends, oh, give me some food, give me some food. Not yeah. actually ask them, be yeah, like, oh, yeah, send yeah, me yeah. one, send me one. Of you know course, what I mean? of course. And yeah, I just used to take that. That's how I used to feed myself in school. And then um, year 10 came. I was like, bro, I need to stop this. Mm. I need to make money. Bang, year 10. When I was 15 years old, I made 30,000 pounds. Wow. 15 years old. And again, all receipts are online. I can, I can show you every single receipt. So what made it motivated you to get into the Forex industry? There's so many industries, like you said. You've got drop shipping. You've got SMMA, which is really popular now. So many different industries. What motivated you and said Forex is the way? Really and truly, four years ago at that time, every single influencer was like, oh, I trade Forex. I okay. trade Forex. And then as I saw that, I was like, okay, you're trading Forex and you're making this much money. I'm going to join in. That's, that's really it. Nothing special. <laughs> listen, that's very interesting that you said that. Well, listen, my audience, I have a Telegram group where we just speak on motivation, ETC, and how to create wealth. It's a safe place with exclusive content, ETC. So I did ask them to ask a few questions for you. They've got some questions for themselves. So I'm going to fire some of those questions to you. Let's get it, man. But before we do that, I want to check out your new watch piece. But before we get that, I do have a gift for you. Now, I do think after you see your watch, you won't care about the gift. <laughs> no, so no, no. I'd rather give you the gift first. I always appreciate everything, man. No problem. Um, so listen, it, this is a pair of earphones. So it's actually my brand, Blue Oka earphones, uh, BT 5.1. Yeah. Thank you, I'm trying my best. So we just released it recently and I uh, wanted you to be the first ever person to uh, have the earphones. Let's get it, man. Thank you very much. Nah, on, appreciate, man. appreciate, appreciate, it. appreciate. All right, so listen, enough about all that. We want to get straight into the watch piece that he's purchased today. Let's get into it. 
Harry, nice to meet you. Eugene, Harry, nice to meet you, nice sir. Nice to meet you. Have you come from far? Yeah, I came from Coventry. Coventry, from the Marshall, nice yeah. a little bit. Is this the yeah. first watch you bought? Or uh, second watch, actually. Second watch yeah. you got in there. Yeah. I got a uh, Digdus 41. I brought it from Adam also. Oh, did you, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, a few bits then. Yeah. Well, okay. we'll get you into this one today. Of course, let's get it. I mean, I, <laughs> listen, this is not even my watch, but I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I haven't seen it in person, person, but. Nah, okay. There we go. Oh my that gosh. Wow. That is beautiful. Yeah, it's a lovely yeah, thank watch. You. Thank you very much. Beautiful. Can we get it on you now? Yeah, let's do it. And what type of watch is this? So this is a Yacht Master. But with this one, I think the size, I actually prefer this size because I just think it's, it's more comfortable every day, etc. So in terms of like, for you, I think, you know, this is a bad one. ticks a lot of boxes. Beautiful. So let's get it on you then. <laughs> Always wanted. Thank, thank you very much. No, no problem. Thanks for coming to us. Wow, I gotta ask, how much did this set you back? Um, Roughly, around, just a rough estimate. Around 20. 20. Wow. <laughs> Together we're setting off on an investigative joyride determined to peel back the layers of the financial enigma and uncover whether there's more to this forest tale than meets the skeptical eye. Oh yeah, this is... <laughs> is this what you're on a bit of? Uh, this is nice man. It's alright. <laughs> My next question, graphics designer and the at is andy.yrn and they say, my interview question for the mystery forex trader is, how long did he trade before his breakthrough? So how long were you doing this until you said, okay, yeah. I've, I can make this a literal job for myself? Yeah, so if you trade forex, there was a moment in time where there was something called smart money concepts and it was working amazingly, literally. When I tell you, you would enter a trade one out of five times, like it might touch take profit or two out of five times, but when it touched take profit, you would make a lot of money. Okay. And then this was an amazing time in my life. So that was about one year after my journey, mm -hmm. but then the market conditions changed as someone did say at the start, yeah. like the market conditions changed, the strategy literally stopped working. And then I was like, okay, I need to get in something else. So basically one year into my journey, I started making a few profits. Uh, but then after that, for the next year after that, I didn't really make a lot of profit. Again, I was 14, 15, yeah, yeah. you can't expect me to make thousands or even $10,000, like I was making hundreds. And then where I started actually breaking through was when I was 16. Again, I had a strategy which also changed because of market conditions. Yeah. And then I had to change it according, accordingly to it. But again, that's literally what I did. When I was 16 and then I passed my first funded challenge, 50K. Okay. And then when I passed that, Really and truly, it just went up and up and up from there yeah. at the end of the day. That's it. So it was really from the age of 16 that you saw a breakthrough yeah. type of... Yeah. So basically two years. Yeah, for, basically to see two that. years of my journey. Yeah. Understand. So this is all recent to you, ETC all new to you, or what would you say? Yeah, really and truly I would, but uh, again, I have kind of stepped back from Forex, you can say. Of course. Because I've got a real product. I've got a real product which works, which is the best in the game, as I did say. So I tried to focus on that more mm -hmm. than Forex. Because again, Forex, you're gonna have to be patient. Some days you're not gonna get a trade, some days you are. True. Literally me, myself, people are like, the Forex traders which don't actually trade, they're like, oh, I need to trade every single day, I need to, need to do this, do that. However, if you see their results in mm -hmm. six months and compare, it, and compare it to someone who trades two or three times a month, you'll see that the person is trading two or three times a month. It's way better, better than them. And that's what I do right now. Two or three times a month, four yeah. times a month, even if it happens, that's how much I trade right now. Before calling it a day, we made a quick stop in Harrods to browse some items from Louis Vuitton, Amiri, and Laura Piana. The 17-year-old Forex trader and I had some beautiful conversations, and he gave me some great insight into the Forex market. But I must admit that I still have my doubts about the world of virtual currencies. This industry has defrauded far too many individuals, in my opinion. 
Perhaps the phrase one bad apple spoils the bunch is just as true. However, I would want to hear your opinions on the so-called corrupted sector in the comment section below.